Uh, this is Two Echo Zero Bravo Mike Tango returning. Hello YouTube, I'm Ben, I'm 2 Echo Zero, Bravo Mike Tango, and in today's video I want to tell you all about All Star Link, 10 reasons why I think you'll want to use it, and 5 of the most common objections as to why people don't like the All Star Link network. Well firstly you might be thinking, well what is All Star Link? Let me tell you, All Star Link is a voice over internet protocol or VoIP system originally designed for telephones that's been reused by the amateur radio world as a way of hooking up 20,000 amateur radio users throughout the world. All Star has taken a system that runs Asterisk, which was originally invented as a telephone program to connect up different internet connected telephones to one another and reutilized it for amateur radio. So we're familiar with how a repeater works. Someone on perhaps a handheld radio gives a signal to a local repeater. That repeater then broadcasts that signal to anyone who happens to be listening on those frequencies. Well, All Star does that across the internet. By using your handheld radio into either a local repeater or a node, you can connect to amateur radio enthusiasts around the world, a bit like using a repeater, but using the internet rather than a local repeater. Reinventing Asterisk into a new program called All Star Link, the amateur radio world have created Radio Over Internet Protocol. So how does it work? Well, from your radio, you connect it to either a local repeater or a node. Um, this node here just gives out a few milliwatts, so it's only really for use within my house, but other uh, nodes like this are connected to big antennas on repeaters throughout the world. So from your little radio, you connect to a node, and then through the internet, this node connects to a series of other nodes, and then out of those nodes back to another radio. That way I can be speaking on my radio to someone on the other side of the world without the requirement for large antennas or brilliant propagation. I can do it through the internet. So what are the 10 reasons that I would give for using it? Well, reason number one, it is cheap. For less than £150 or $200, you could get yourself an all-star node and a handheld radio and connect to pretty much anyone in the world. Number two, for those of you who are technical amateurs, this is a crossover point between the world of computers and the world of radio. If you're into programming computers and particularly Raspberry Pis, then All Star is a great way to converge two different hobbies into one place, radio and computers. And using the internet and the voice over internet protocol systems, you can create your own little node wherever you are and use it using a radio to connect to anyone else who happens to be using the same technology. Thirdly, propagation is never an issue. With All Star Link, you can connect to anyone at any time as long as you've both got a good internet connection. That means that the QSB on the bands and the sunspots and the uh, problems with the F1 and F2 layer separating during the day and coming together at night, that's all not a problem on All Star Link. Number four, you don't need a massive antenna. Now that's going to be particularly helpful in a few different circumstances. Using my all-star node, I've spoken to old age pensioners who are in nursing homes where the idea of having a, I don't know, 80 meter Yagi is just well out of the question, but a small node in the corner of the room connected to the internet, well, that's possible. So they can continue to run their hobby even when in a nursing home. Secondly, I've spoken to amateur radio enthusiasts in other countries where the local military have asked people not to put up antennas. They're very suspicious of large antennas. And when the military are using the amateur bands, they're asked not to broadcast. And therefore, amateur radio through the internet is pretty much the only option. Number five, All Star Link is really helpful if you want to set up a SCED, that is a scheduled QSO with someone. Let's say I'm trying to speak to someone about a particular problem I'm having with my 20 meter end fed antenna and someone else says, oh, I had the same problem, let me take you through it. To try and set up a QSO on 20 meters might be problematic. Firstly, because the conditions might not be great. Secondly, they might be in skip zone. Thirdly, the problem might be with my 20 meter antenna anyway, whereas using my All Star Link node, I'm able to connect with them at any time of the day or night and set up an appointment with them and say, OK, I'll meet you on this particular node at this particular time. I'll see you there. Number six, 
All Star Link is easier to use than many of the other digital modes. I've got a DMR radio and I use it frequently, but I have to say All Star Link is just quicker and easier. We haven't got all of the issues with colour codes or talk groups or things like that. You can very easily and quickly see which node you're connected to and which other nodes it's connected to so that you can see who can hear your conversation and talk to anyone in the world. Number seven, all Starlink is compatible with other voice over internet protocol radio devices, for example, Echolink. And as Echolink continues to gain traction, it's great to know that my All Star node can easily connect to any Echolink device. Number eight, the hobby of amateur radio is first and foremost a hobby of communication. It is a means by which like minded people can talk to one another. And if you're into both the computer science side of the radio hobby and also uh, radio communications, then you can bring the two together in All Star Link and talk to other like-minded people, just as you would on 80 meters on a long wire or on a very, very high frequency or ultra high frequency conversation using satellites. You can do exactly the same using the internet. Number nine, it's quick and easy to get a QSO by Connecting to a well-known and well-used hub like Hubnet, which I use often, you can easily connect in and talk to people very, very quickly. If you're on 40 metres, it might take you a few minutes to find someone calling CQ, or perhaps you'll have been calling CQ for 20 minutes before someone comes back to your call on All Star. If you've just got 10 minutes and you want a quick chat with someone, it's possible just to connect and talk and make quick contacts. And lastly, number 10, there is overlap between All Star Link and Real Radio, whatever Real Radio is. I'll come on to that in just a moment. But often I connect to the wind system in America and I can speak to a trucker driving along a road using a local simplex repeater that's connected to the All Star Link network and connects to my hub. So there's crossover there. And there's also crossover the other way as well. Quite often the conversations on All Star Link are about a special event station that's just calling CQ on 17 metres and perhaps you might want a QSO with them or something to do with antennas and propagation and those sorts of things. So it is a way into the hobby and also a way of exploring other areas of the hobby. One example of this would be if you want to get into a new mode like FT8, you're going to struggle on 80 metres to have a long conversation with someone about how FT8 works. Whereas if you're on All Star, you can say, OK, I'll meet you two o'clock. Let's have an hour to play around and see if I can get set up with this. It's a great way to explore new areas of the hobby. There are, of course, some naysayers and the five main objections that I've heard to All Star Link are number one, it's not real radio. I think by that what is meant is that real radio is connecting one radio to another radio directly, not reliant on anything else for your communication in between. And I have to agree, it's not real radio and it's not trying to be real radio and it's not pretending to be real radio, but it is really helpful. So I totally agree with those who say it's not real radio. I don't get a real buzz from talking to someone in Indonesia on All Star Link, because I know it's just through the internet, whereas on 20 metres, that would be a real achievement and it would give me that warm, fuzzy feeling inside. But still, even though it's not real radio, it's still a helpful mode of communication for amateur radio enthusiasts. Number two, people say it's cheating. It's cheating because you're saying that you're talking to people in all these different countries, but it's cheating. Well, Yes and no. It, cheating, it would be cheating if I was pretending that I wasn't using the internet, but no one's doing that on All Star. They know that they're going through the internet. They see the benefits of it, and no one's saying that it's a true DX communicating with someone halfway around the world through the internet. Number three, people say, if I wanted to use the internet for communication, I'd just either use my mobile phone or Skype or WhatsApp or one of the many other messaging systems that are available to the mass markets. Why would I need to invest in more equipment? To that I would say because All Star is an intersection between the world of computers and the world of radio. No one on Skype is sat in a lorry driving down the motorway using a local repeater system. They're all on Skype. Whereas on All Star, you might well be speaking to someone who's using a radio, not even aware that their local repeater is connected to your All Star node. That way, the hobby combines the world of radio and the world of computer in a way that Skype and WhatsApp and other forms of social media just doesn't do. Fourthly, people say that these new modes are taking people away from proper radio. 
I've heard that about FT8 and RTGY and other uh, digital modes as well. I've found the opposite to be the case. So I first got into All Star when I was first licensed, partly because it was cheap, it was easy, and I could make QSOs with people all around the world. I now spend most of my time on 40 meters and 20 meters and occasionally on 80 meters doing what others might call proper radio. But to get to that point, I had to invest a lot of time and a lot of equipment and pass my intermediate exam so that I could get that little bit more power to cut it above the noise. And all that takes time and effort. I wouldn't have done that if I got disillusioned with the hobby at the start because I could never talk to anyone. It was All Star Link that got me into proper radio, not the other way round. So I would say for as many people that it's stealing them away from the real hobby of DXing, likewise, it's attracting people to it as well. And fifthly, people say it's reliant on too much. I think this is mainly from the culture of emergency radio or preppers in the USA who are looking for their radio devices to be totally standalone. That is battery operated and portable and quick go bags to grab in an emergency and fly out the door. And of course, an all star link node needs an internet connection and a wireless router and an internet service provider and a network somewhere that makes all the magic happen to connect all the nodes together. And if any of those drop out, then of course you can't use it for emergency communication. Well, I would say it's not for emergency communication. It's never intended to be and therefore don't discount it because it doesn't do everything that you would want in an emergency. However, I would say in some emergencies it might still work. So I wouldn't discount it as a non-starter for communication in the same way that a mobile phone may or may not work in an emergency. But I wouldn't leave it at home just in case it doesn't work. I'd take it with me anyway. So there are 10 good reasons why you might want to use All Star Link and five reasons why you might not want to. I'd love to know though, have you used All Star Link? What do you think of it? Do put something in the comments underneath this video to let me know your experience and whether All Star Link is an area of the hobby that you've explored before or something you're looking to get into. And don't forget, over my Idiot's Guide to Building an All Star Node, where I give you a step-by-step -step guide as to how to build one of these so that you can get on All Star, there is also a competition running. So instead of it costing you £150, perhaps to invest in the equipment, to get your first all-star node up and running, you can enter a competition for free at the end of this video and get yourself an all-star node sent to you if you're the lucky winner. Well, I hope that's been a helpful video about All Star Link. If you've enjoyed this video, do subscribe to my channel so that you can see other videos that I'm putting together. And until next time, I'm Ben, I'm 2 Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango, off and clear. 7-3. Uh, this is 2 Echo Zero, Bravo, Mike Tango, returning.